Hi everybody, Stu, AG6AG. You know, I got an email from a good friend of mine the other day, and he had some questions about our packet uh, list that we have. We have several packet stations throughout Ventura County, and we have a list of them up on our Emergency Communications website with all sorts of information about each of those stations. Now, he was curious about what some of the entries actually meant or were used for. And I was taken back a little bit by that because I, I kind of thought everybody knew, but apparently not. Thus, the reason for this video. Today we're going to go over what all of the description headers are on our packet list. And in doing that, you might just learn some additional capabilities of the EOCs in your area. Oh, hey, before I forget, please, if you like my videos, click on the like button for me, all right? And hey, don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. If you're subscribed and you click the notification icon, you'll get notified every time I have a new video. Anyway, let's go ahead and take a glance at what that little bitty list looks like. There it is. And, you know, we're talking about the headers up at the top and what they mean. And, you know, most of these are fairly straightforward, right? All the way over on the far left, we got location and then the frequency that that TNC is listening on. Uh, GPS position, which is very helpful if you're trying to plot where you can communicate. Uh, and then we start getting into links, call, PBBS, mode, gate, alias. Those are the names and the titles that we're going to talk a little bit about. Uh, let's first start out by trying to make it a little bit more obvious what those titles are. Again, we're going to discuss links, call, PBBS, mode, or excuse me, node, and gate, as well as alias and what those settings are used for today. All right. Now, um, I will admit, right, that our setup may be unique in Ventura County. Each one of our EOCs has a Cantronics KAMXL. And that is a two-port TNC. So we actually have two radios hooked to each of our TNCs and the EOCs. Now, uh, by the way, EOC stands for Emergency Operations Center, uh, if you don't know. I always have to throw that out because we do have some new hams out there that haven't really been exposed to this yet. Now, real important to understand that two radios hooked up on different bands allows all sorts of things to be able to be achieved through these TNCs. Well, for one, of course, you can connect to the packet BBS on either band, right? So if you've got 220 or uh, 2 meters, you'll be able to get on the system. But there's so much, much more. Um, so let's go ahead and talk a little bit about this, all right? So here's the deal. The call sign listing, you know, that should be fairly obvious. The call sign basically lists the call sign of the operator that is using the TNC or taking responsibility for the use of the TNC. That's a key statement right there because uh, usually in our county, that license is a club license for the individual areas in the county, okay? Sometimes it belongs to the EC or whatever, but the reason that that's in there is that every single packet that goes in and out of the TNC utilizes that call sign in the packet header, okay? Real important to remember. Now, that seems fairly obvious, right? Let's talk about links. So one of the links entries, all right, would be tied to 223.580. Well, that's a frequency. And in our particular situation, this link entry would be on the link uh, or on the line that specifies the TNC on 
two meters or on 145.050. And what a link means is that you can link through the TNC coming in, in this particular case, coming in on 145.0502 meters. It will repeat the packet or digipeat that packet out on 223.580 or 1.25 meters. So you can technically cross digipeat within the system which is very handy. Now, also, it works the other way, right? You'll see an exact, looks almost like the exact same entry for our TNCs, but it will be reversed and it will be tied to the 145.050 two-meter frequency. The specification of the frequency for that TNC is going to be the 223.580 frequency. So the bottom line is now you can go in through 220 and digipeat out two meters. Okay. So we'll demonstrate how you do that a little later in the video. So the rest of the stuff in here, all right, we talked about call. PBBS or packet BBS system or personal BBS system uh, or bulletin board system is actually used for you to be able to send messages into the BBS. And that typically is the tactical for that EOC. So a great example is if I wanted to connect and send a message to East County Sheriff's Station, the PBBS that I would connect to would be ECSS, which is East County Sheriff Station's tactical. All right. What about the node? So the node name can be used to digipeat, and it can also be used to use KA node, which is a basically a, another method to digipeat that is a direct so you directly connect into the initial station and then that initial station connects out and it's passed through in a different way i am told that it reduces the issues with the invisible tnc that you can't hear but other systems can so interference tends to be a little bit less anyway that is what i'm told um we'll be demonstrating that we can also cross band through this method and I'll be showing that as well. The gate. So the gate entry for each of these um, EOCs is actually the way that you can cross band digipeat. Okay. So if I specify a digipeter with the gate name, What's going to happen is it's going to go in whatever frequency I'm coming in on, whether I'm coming in on 2 meters or coming in on 1.25, and it's going to digipeat out the other frequency. Now, when would this be important? Well, um, there are some radios, some digipeters in the county, or excuse me, some TNCs in the county or PBBSs in the county that only listen on 220, and you need to be able to gateway through them to get there. Also, if you're equipped with 220, you may want to digipeat through one of these gateways to send a um, RMS message for Windlink out through two meters. We will demonstrate that as well. Aliases. All right, so usually what's listed in our settings is what the tactical call with a one on the end of it is. This is kind of a strange setup that we're using because we're not actually programming that into the BBS unless we're using Outpost and using a tactical to send messages, okay? Um, 
more and more there's conversations about getting away from outpost here in the county and going with terminal and changing the way we do things a bit. Uh, mostly because we're looking at the packet capabilities differently now than we were originally uh, back when all this was planned out. The actual alias, if you want to know what it's supposed to be programmed into the TNC, is what should be the address or tactical that you go to to do plain digipedia. But by the way, you can use the node name to you do plain digipeding. And in our case here in Ventura County, that may be a better choice. Okay, just because what they have listed as the alias, it actually isn't the digipeter alias. It is more of an identifier that if you received a message from that particular uh, EOC into another EOC that you could easily identify who it was from. So let's get started on showing you how all this stuff works and maybe it'll sink in a little bit easier this way. Um, all right, so we're going to be looking at the call, the PBBS identifier, the node and how to use that name, the gate and how to use that name, and the alias and how to use that name if the alias is configured as the digipeter. Okay, so this is my setup. I am on easy term over here connected to sound modem that's minimized and it is on a two meter radio. Up here this is my cam XL it is configured like a EOC TNC um, has all of the tacticals and the aliases that I use for training for folks and uh, it does have a different 2 meter radio hooked to it as well as a 220 radio hooked to it. All right, so with that, let's go ahead and take a look at how call works. Now, call is interesting because we can use that call not just to identify the station properly under the uh, FCC guidelines, but we can also use it to chat back and forth. Let me get rid of this here temporarily. I'm going to stick this over on this side here. I'm going to drag this over here a little bit. Now, this particular program right there, right, the easy term, in order to be able to connect to my call sign, which is AG6AG, I have to set this up in my station setup and add an SSID to my terminal call sign because I cannot chat with myself. I can't use the same call sign and chat with myself. However, ever it will allow me to use a SSID to do so, right? So I'm going to say, okay, it's going to tell me that I need to restart. So I'm going to go ahead and restart my easy term instance here. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to connect to AG6AG. All right. Now, I am connecting to AG6AG over here from two meters over there. Now, I'm going to show you the status of how this TNC is configured and what it tells me right here is that my IO is on the second port and I'm in slot A and that's how I'm configured. I will be connecting here into my first port. Okay. And if I do this, it will list all of the ports and other things that are configured in here. And you notice I have port 1 and I have port 2 and I have different um, slots for each of them. Okay, A, B, C. These are just different streams that are available. Currently, they are all disconnected. So let's go ahead and connect. And it tells me over here that AG6AG1 has connected and I am just going to over here I'm going to say 
Hi there. And that's going to show up on my screen over there. Kind of like chat, right? It's exactly like chat. Now, interestingly enough, though, I'm still in command mode over here, and my I.O. is hooked where? Well, let's take a look at our status, and it shows that, you know what? I am connected to myself over here on A1, but my I.O. is hooked to A2, so I need to change to port 1, port 1A to be exact. So I use the pipe symbol with a 1 and an A, and I am over now on A1. Now I've got to go into what they call converse mode though. So I have to hit K and that's a shortcut to go into converse mode. Now everything I type is going to be transmitted out this port. So I'm going to go ahead and say hi, uh, right, boy it'd help if I could spell, huh, at you. And over here in my window, look, hi, right back at you. So I could talk to myself, which doesn't make a lot of sense, although I seem to do that a little bit at my age. Uh, I could talk to myself back and forth without any problem or talk to somebody else in another EOC, keyboard to keyboard, okay? We don't use this a lot, but it is available and we can use it. All we got to do is know how, all right? So with that, I'm going to go ahead and say disconnect over here. It has disconnected. I have dropped back into the command mode here. And I am going to go ahead and change back to my default. Because if I don't, I'll forget. And then I'll try to connect to somebody thinking that I'm on 220 when I'm actually on just 2 meters. All right. So we got that so far. Now, let's go back, and I'm just going to scooch this over, and let's, uh, let's take a look at our list. So we've now covered call sign, PBBS. So connecting to a PBBS, let's go ahead and do that. And now, I am going to change my setting back here back to AG6AG. Okay, and the reason I'm doing that is having a tactical, at least in my particular configuration, seems to break node stuff. And we're going to be demonstrating the node really soon, so I want to make sure that uh, it's going to work for that. I do now, after I've changed it, I do have to close it again. I'm going to have to open it back up, which is right there. And now I am going to connect to the tactical name for my PBBS over here, which is for my education or training one, VCEDU. And that is the name of the PBBS that I'm connecting to. So I'm going to connect and it comes back and look, it says over here I'm connected. Notice we don't see anything on the screen over here. And why is that? Well, mainly because we aren't in monitor mode. If I want to see who's on my TNC, though, I can type in status right here at the command, and it shows that BBS uh, slot 1 is being used by AG6AG. And, of course, from here I can list the messages in the BBBS, there happens to be a uh, bulletin. I can tell by the B here. And I'll do an R to read. And the message number is 1. I'll select message 1. And it will display the message. And this is basically saying, this is a training PBBS. If you want to send a test message, feel free. And that's basically it. So from here, right, I can go ahead and say bye and disconnect from the PBBS. If I look over here now and I hit status, I'll see that there's no one connected to the BBS anymore. All right. So that's the use of the PBBS name and that's how you connect to the different BBSs. Now, let's see, where are we on our list? Uh, let me move this a little farther over. We're now at, now at node. 
okay? So I'm going to hold off on Node. I'm going to skip to Gate. Uh, promise, I'll get back to Node. But Gate is one that's rather interesting. And I am going to, uh, let me shut, take this off the screen. I am going to put the money on command to turn the monitor on so we see the packets that are going back and forth as I do this. So the gate name is typically the PBBS name or what we would call the tactical name, right? Plus the letter G at the end of it. Now, you can see right here that we're starting it. We, we're getting beacons. We're getting other things that are coming through. They're being received here. You notice that it has slash one. And what slash one is telling us is it's coming in on one, or better known as port one, okay? All right, so let's say that I want to connect to a PBBS, and I want to connect to that PBBS on 220, but I only have two meters, all right? So what I can do is I can connect, and the PBS, BBS I'll connect to is, oh, let's connect to... Oh, I'm going to do um, Las Robles Hospital, right? And as the digipeter, I am going to put in, let's see, we'll put in um, VC, EDU, boy, fingers, kind of like little bananas that slam on the keyboard, um, G for gateway. And what's going to happen here is we're going to connect you see, I'm coming in on one. It's coming back out on two. So I'm actually going in on two meters into my TNC, and it's automatically going out on 220. That's cool. Okay. Now, I'll do an L, and it should list any messages that are on that PBBS which it does. And if I'm looking over at the uh, black screen here, you know, I'm seeing all the stuff and how the communication is going between port one to port two to port one. Um, and why would I do this? Why would I actually gateway like this? Well, there's a couple different reasons. Um, let's say that what I'm trying to connect to is only listening on 220. Okay, well, and all I have is two meters. I'd need to do this somehow. And this is a very simple and easy way to do it. I'm going to go ahead and hit B for buy, and it's going to go through the whole disconnect process just like that. All right. And for point of reference, I'm going to connect directly to the hospital here. And... Um, without going through the gateway, which I can do, I'm close enough to do it directly. See how all of these now are one. It doesn't go to two anymore, right? Let's do a list and all we're gonna see are ones. So everything is taking place on two meters. Cool, right? Let me go ahead and say bye. And let's take a look where we're at now on our little list. All right. So, we've covered gate. Let's take a look at Node. Node is really cool. Cantronics has uh, a protocol that allows you to connect to a TNC and then chain out to another TNC. And it allows that TNC that's sitting in the middle to broker the connections between the two with a little bit more intelligence than just digipeating. The idea behind this is you won't end up in a situation where you have that hidden node out there someplace that's doing bad things that are causing disconnects. Uh, it's supposed to be a much more efficient way to connect. So, we are still set up here in money, money mode, okay? So we can watch what goes on when I connect to the node. 
So let's go ahead and I'll select connect. And instead of going to where I really want to go, instead of putting that destination in, we're just going to type in VCEDUN, okay, and hit connect. So what's happening is you see that this comes up with enter command, kind of like I'm on a PBBS, right? But it's not quite the same because there, there are different characters. There's nothing for me to list. But there's a C, there's an X. So the C is to connect. So if I choose C, I can connect to, uh, let's connect to uh, Los Robles Hospital again. All right. Now, if you look over here, you can see what's going on and everything is on channel one. It's made the link and now it gives me the PBBS menu for Las Robles, right? I hit enter for the list. Boom. I get a list of the messages. Kind of cool, right? And supposedly the KA node stuff allows it to do this with intelligence. I encourage you to open up the manual and see what they're talking about as far as intelligence goes. All right. Anyway, with that, um, there was something else I wanted to show you as well. Let's go ahead and connect to the same thing, right? I'm connecting to the node and it comes back there's an X command here. If I put in X and go to HSPLR, I want you to watch what port stuff happens here because by putting the X in, it's going to crossband connect. It's going to connect via 220. Check it out. You see the two that's popping up there at the end? That does it, man. That's what gets it. So, list again. So again, if this PBBS was only operating on 220 and all I had was two meters, I could go in that way. And by the way, it works the other way. If I was coming in on two, uh, 220, if I hit X, it's going to go and try to connect out on two meters. So, best of both worlds. Let me say bye. Now, I'm going to show you one more thing you might find interesting. We're going to go to the KN node again. Okay? So, I'm going to connect. All right. Now, I'm going to crossband connect, but I'm going to go out of this node to a digipeter and then, excuse me, I'm going out this node to a digipeter, but what I'm going to connect to is ECSS via RAS220. Let's see what happens. So check it out. Check my path out. I've gone out of the two meter connection I made, out 220 to a 220 digipeter, which then was used to connect to a site that I could not connect to directly, which is the East County Sheriff's Station out here. Now, it takes a little while for all the commands to take place. For everything to pop up, for everything to work and show up, okay? Because I'm going through three different systems and I'm only at 1200 baud, but I'm able to do it. If the phones were down, if the internet was down, I'd be able to do this. So that's the concept here, right? All right, so let's say bye. It's going to disconnect from all this stuff. And let's see. What else did I want to show you? All right. So,
We've covered call. We've covered PBBS. We've covered node in great detail. We've covered gate in detail. Alias. So I'm going to show this to you just so you've got a grip on it. But I'm going to do a couple different digipeding things here. All right. Um, and I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to slide this over. Let me uh, get this text out of the way. I'll leave the monitor on here. Okay. But there are the name that's associated with the node. And there's the name that's associated with digipeding, which for the configuration in a Cantronics is set by using the term my alias. Now, in our spreadsheet, it doesn't necessarily mean that. Again, as I explained earlier, my alias is more along the lines of something that we look at as the tactical alias when it's uh, that particular station is sending mail. Uh, that said, the proper use of my alias is the name of the digipeter. Now, on my system, I can digipete, and on all the other systems out there, you can digipete using the node name. You don't have to make a node connection directly. I can type in uh, in my connection here, I can type in that I want to go to, uh, directly to uh, Los Robles Hospital, right? And I can set the digipeter as VCEDU, -E I got to get that right, EDU dot, da, uh, N, no dash, N. And it will do a standard digipeat connection. All right. It will. It's this is not a, a K node connection. This is just standard digipeat. All right. And I can just do an L right here and list the messages that are at the hospital. And now I can say bye. What a lot of people don't know is the majority of the. EOCs in Ventura County also have an alias that's actually set on the system and not informational. And that alias is the tactical ending in AD for DigiP. And I'll demonstrate that. It's exactly the same thing. Okay? So you could use either, either name. Anyway... That's really everything I wanted to cover. I hope you got something out of this, and I, I really hope that those messages now mean more to you. Because I got to tell you, you know, a lot of times this stuff can be really confusing. And I forget that not everybody has had the opportunity to learn it and play with it in the same way that I have. Um, I want to thank you for listening to this. I hope it helps you. I hope it educates you a little bit. And uh, hey, again, if you like it, click the like. If you have any more questions, comment in this video down below. I try to answer my comments as quickly as possible, usually no more than a couple days uh, if it's a question. Um, and please don't forget to subscribe. Anyway, my name is Stu, AG6AG, and I hope I hear you out there on the air.